All right, good morning, everybody. I'm Pep Carrera with Vital Source. Uh, the bulk of this presentation really isn't going to be about us. It's going to be uh, talking about a problem in the industry that I think doesn't have enough focus in, on it. For the longest time, um, we've been coming to this show, and a lot of the focus in the course material space has been about the learning experience. A lot of us um, have innovated around that learning experience, ourselves included, but we don't talk enough about the distribution challenges in this space. And I wanted to really just hone in on that problem domain, make the case for it, and you know, see if the audience agrees. Um, here's the problem. <clears throat> Students are confused. They're confused about whether they should buy the content or not. They're confused about how to acquire the content. And it creates, in the end, an outcomes issue for that student. We'll show you that in data and make the case for it. Then when that student graduates and goes to corporate life, I don't know how many of you work at a traditional company and aren't in startup mode, they're really confused about how to get the skills and training that they need. Both of these are problems. They're problems for students in higher ed, and they're problems for students in uh, uh, um, the workplace as well. So let's talk a little bit about data and how to make the case for distribution. This is a really large institution that we work with, and we took the same course um, across thousands of students, and we looked at usage rates on students to understand how students perform based on their grades and their engagement with the content. The markers on the bottom are really simple things. You can't get this in print land, but in digital world, you can get these fairly easily. Pages read, how many times a student has logged in to actually study, how many pages per session, how many notes and highlights they've taken, and how long they've been on the platform. And you can see, on average, the A students are literally just engaging more. The students that withdraw or fail, much, much less. Here it is actually broken down by literal grade level. And it makes a really huge impression what's going on. The A students across the board are engaging more. And if you just look at students that do complete the course but do poorly, even at a C level, you can see the marked difference between those students and the A and B students. Here's a really great school um, that's in the southeast US. The difference between 2016 and the prior years is that the students all got the content that they needed on day one of class versus a traditional model where they hunt and peck for the content in the marketplace. That is the literal only thing that changed academic year over academic year. It wasn't a fundamental shift in teaching and learning. It wasn't a pedagogy change. It was literally just the same content that the faculty had adopted was provided to the student on day one of class. And there was a marked jump in GPA. Another example, um, and the last one, this is from a partner of ours. These, this is a community college in Virginia two specific courses, no platform change. So whether they were using a courseware platform for a publisher or a textbook, same adopted materials in place, the literal only difference is the students got it on the first day of class. And you can see the shift um, and the number of students that went to an A grade on Econ 201, and the number of students that went up across the board in the higher grades um, in Econ 202 as well. So marked differences, and literally, their experience didn't fundamentally shift. Now, you could argue that going from print to a digital e-textbook is an experience shift. Uh, but you know, in, in the end, we believe digital is a better experience, but pr solves a distribution problem. Um, at, at a corporate and company level, <clears throat> the same issue is there. Um, if you were in here earlier, you heard DeGreed and others talk. They're trying to solve this problem as well. It is really difficult to figure out, as an employee, how to get the high value skills and training that you need to succeed at a company. This is an example of a company that invested in a, a platform so that they could reach everyone and not just do in-person training. Huge savings um, uh, from a travel perspective because they train their entire sales force and this is a Fortune 500 company. But they also worked in the platform because it was a sales program to report back deal revenue that flowed through the training that they received, and it was over $50 million. So big numbers, we've got great data and markers. 
What are the actual solutions? And you've heard about all these solutions at this show. Inclusive access is one of them. These are three, what I would say, structured examples we just picked out of customers of ours. In two years, one customer saved $2.3 million. One small pilot saved $100,000 to the student. Uh, uh, this weekend, a uh, customer of ours, University of Tennessee Knoxville, was quoted that in fall alone, by moving to this program, their students saved $2 million. There's a subscription solved for this as well. Um, for those of you that know what Cengage is up to, they came out with Cengage Unlimited. We'll have to see what that does, but that is solving a distribution problem. It's not changing the Cengage experience for students other than through a distribution lens. And then there's OER. Um, OER is heavily focused on affordability, but at its core, really what OER is trying to solve is a distribution problem. OER isn't necessarily a better experience than the books that are being provided. In fact, it's a more limited catalog, and sometimes the experience is a downward shift, but what OER does solve is it ensures every student gets the content on the first day of class. Um, in the corporate world, for these high value in classroom training programs that are really the meat of what you're trying to train employees on, there are learning experience platforms like Degreed that solve for ad hoc training and then there are things called program experience platforms like the, the case that I made earlier that provide material travel savings and actually lead to effective outcomes for these high value programs. All right. Last bit here, and then we'll end on Q&A, because I, uh, I, I do work for Vital Source, and I should tell you a little bit about us. Um, we're a, co a technology company, and we solve all of the problems that it takes to solve this main distribution issue and provide the best experience platforms that we can, whether it's on our platform or a partner's platform to students and learners. We solve adoption problems um, uh, in integration problems, so there's lots of integrations that you have to do to solve this distribution issue, be it learning management systems, point of sale systems, student information systems. We bring experience platforms when that's the modality that um, needs to be distributed. We have an ebook platform, a library platform, and a program experience platform. And we can run the transactions to make this work. In an inclusive access program, that's a B2B to B2C to model. You're giving the university the power to negotiate, and the contract is with them, but ultimately the student is paying for the course materials. There's direct student charges, there's pure B2B programs. We can really solve all of those, and solving a distribution problem requires all of these elements here. Key stats, 21 million users, 5,300 integrations with customers where we're integrated into platforms, LMS systems, point of sale systems, et cetera, and we distribute 2.9 million products. What, what is a product? We don't own any intellectual property. We're distributing other products from content providers, including OER as well. <clears throat> Last year, we powered half a billion dollars in learning content delivery, solving this distribution problem. The number that we save students and learners on that is more than that as well. So large savings to the learners, solving a distribution problem that ultimately improves outcomes. Um, and we grew at about 20%. Um, good news is this year we're already at 30% plus growth at our size. And we're really proud of that because ultimately the mission is how to bring an experience to the student and the best experience to the student but reach literally everyone and not just let the student decide whether or not they need the materials that their faculty member is recommending and have that same student graduate and show up at a company and not know how to get that high value training that they need. So uh, my job was to try and buzz through this early and see if there were any questions uh, from the audience. Yeah, um, I was asked to repeat the question uh, uh, by the, the MCs in the back. Um, the question, I believe, is, you know, I talked about OER and that it's solving a distribution problem, but isn't OER really solving an affordability issue as well? Um, I'm going to jog back 
uh, to make the point, I think, just to see if we're on the same page, a distribution problem is invariably linked to an affordability issue as well in higher education. So when you try and charge three or $400 for a material, that's gonna cause a distribution issue. And you leave it in a student choice model that exacerbates the student issue, uh, the, the, the distribution issue. Inclusive access are these content providers and companies like us working to get that content that is a premium experience and uh, uh, lots of years of outcomes data behind it into a price point that makes a lot of sense and that it can reach every student. OER is doing the same thing. And in effect, because they're trying to reach an affordability point of either you know, $0 if the student is just downloading a PDF or what have you, or a nominal fee if they're going through a platform provider, um, brings the cost of that material to a point where every student can reach it easily, digitally, what have you. So in higher ed, our, our point of view is that affordability and distribution are invariably linked. Other questions? The, the question was, you know, broadening out beyond just um, content delivery and dealing with assessments uh, uh, and how that's going to go in the future. <clears throat> we, um, we believe, uh, and we've, we've been in this industry for a while, that the concept of paper under glass, um, while this talk has mostly been about distribution, isn't the best digital experience. And so we've been pushing to try and get that content to be the best possible digital experience. And that includes assessments traveling with um, the, the, the content. And so we actually created an authoring platform that we give away basically for a nominal fee to universities, uh, companies, and publishers to be able to take and author content. And we give them lots of interactivity that they can inject in the content, including assessments. Um, and this fall, we're rolling out the capability to have outcomes data travel from that content all the way through to a learning management system as well, uh, and, and basically up the game for what I would call the, the traditional textbook digital experience beyond what it has been. And of course, a lot of what we deliver are the best experiences that are available um, from our publisher partners, which include content with assessments and videos in a platform ecosystem from those providers as well. Any other questions? All right, thank you all very much. Really appreciate it.